Hey guys, alright? Welcome everyone. An elderly tattoo artist is tattooing one of the Yakuza bosses in Osaka. The boss complains to the elderly man that the needle is bothering him. The elderly man tries to advise him on it, but in response, he is severely threatened by the boss. Then someone enters and shows him an envelope addressed to him, which, upon opening it, they see is filled with something like black sand. The elderly man says that many years ago he saw a man open an envelope like that, and then a creature emerged from the shadows and killed everyone present. He was also attacked but did not die. The elderly man then shows them a large wound on his chest covered by a tattoo, saying that he only survived because of a congenital condition he has, where his heart is on the right side instead of the left. The men lean in to see the elderly man's tattoo and realize it's a ninja, the one the old man referred to when he said it emerged from the shadows and killed everyone. Then the mafia boss and everyone in the room start laughing at the elderly man since the ninja clan story was just a legend from over a thousand years ago. Suddenly, the head of one of the Yakuza's servants is severed by something very sharp. This is followed by a massacre where we can only hear the sound of sharp blades in motion and mafia members randomly shooting in various directions but inevitably being killed, hit by shurikens and other deadly ninja weapons. Quickly, everyone is killed, and only the boss remains, who is also ruthlessly eliminated. Next, we see a Europol agent named Mika explaining something to her boss, Ryan Maslow. Mika reveals that she has found a connection between several murders of influential political figures in the government and a clan called Ozunu, which she believes to be a clan of assassins. In her research, she discovered that the Ozunu clan has always been consistent in setting prices for all clients who need their services. Because of this, Mika concludes that the Ozunu clan is behind the massacre at the Yakuza Club in Osaka, which we saw at the beginning of the movie. Ryan seems to doubt the results of Mika's investigation, as the existence of a ninja clan in modern times is considered mere legend. We then see a man about to do his laundry in a Berlin laundromat, and next to him is a woman who seems to have trouble with the washing machine and asks for his help. When the man approaches the woman to assist her, he asks which clan she is from. Surprised by this question, she quickly attacks the man with a knife. They engage in a dangerous knife fight until the laundromat attendant goes to check what is happening. Upon arriving, he sees the empty room with only a running machine, but blood is flowing out of it, revealing a human body inside. The next day, Ryan is having lunch with Mika when he reveals to her that his subordinates have investigated Mika's theory about ninjas, and they have obtained important information about an ancient secret organization called the Nine Clans. Ryan says that a high-ranking KGB agent named Alexei Sabatin was trying to uncover the Nine Clans organization, which had been involved in a series of assassinations of influential people around the world for decades, but everyone believes Sabatin has a mental disorder and was abruptly removed from his duties. Meanwhile, the man involved in the laundromat fight the previous night is seen entering his apartment. The man's name is Rezo, and he has been living in Berlin for some time. Rezo is a ninja and has a complete arsenal hidden throughout his apartment. He begins to remember his past when he was an orphan boy and was taken to be trained along with several other students in a class by a man named Ozunu, who will be his master from then on. There he talks about the life and path of the ninja in the Ozunu clan, which will be his way of life until the end, for Rezo and all his fellow students whom he calls his children. When he was a child, Rezo and the others had to undergo intense physical and mental training as Lord Ozunu was preparing them to become cold-blooded and ruthless ninja assassins. However, young Rezo received care and attention from one of his classmates named Kuriko. One night, while Rezo was in pain from the wounds on his feet sustained during training, Kuriko tenderly treated his injuries, which became permanent scars on his body. The scene then shifts to Mika visiting Alexei Sabaton's house and being warmly welcomed by his wife. Mika asks about Sabaton's investigation and the connection of the Nine Clans to the Prime Minister's death. She reveals that her husband faced many problems while investigating this matter. She said he was confident in the investigation but suddenly became very scared when the results regarding the actions of the Nine Clans became more advanced. The woman reveals that her husband started installing extra locks on all the doors and windows of their house, installed motion sensor cameras in various places, and kept all the corners of the house well lit to eliminate any shadows or blind spots where someone could hide. 
One day, a man visited Sabatin, and the two had a seemingly serious conversation. The wife never knew what her husband and the man were discussing, but Sabatin appeared very scared after talking to him. She also reveals that immediately after the arrival of the mysterious man to meet her husband, a sudden power outage occurred in their house, plunging everything into complete darkness. At the same time, Sabatin was killed. She does not provide further details about her husband's death, but moved by Mika's dedication to her late husband's work, she hands over the entire investigation file on the actions of the nine clans to the agent. When Mika reviews Sabatin's investigation files, she finds evidence of the clan's existence and sees Rezo appearing in a security camera footage from Sabatin's house shortly before his death. The next day, Mika is visited by one of her superiors named Zabransky while she is in her office. He asks Mika about the possibility of Ryan's movements seeming suspicious. Suspicious of the man's interest in her colleague, she responds cautiously that there is nothing strange about his behavior. When Mika and Ryan meet outside the office, Ryan reveals that Zabransky also approached him and asked the same question about Mika. She then presumes that they are being monitored due to their investigation into the Nine Clans and that someone will try to disrupt the investigation. Ryan also believes this because the actions of the Nine Clans are directly related to the most influential people in the world. He emphasizes to Mika that the assassin clans are protected by powerful individuals around the world and asks her to increase her vigilance. Meanwhile, elsewhere, Rezo reminisces about his past with Kiriko. During that time, he discovered Kiriko cutting the bonsai tree's roots and warned her that she would get in trouble for doing so. However, Kiriko explained that all living beings, including bonsai trees, have a heart and the right to choose their own path in life. Rezo, who innocently believed he had no heart, was guided by Kiriko to listen to his own heartbeat. She affirmed that all humans have a heart, just like her and Rezo. After that, young Rezo had to undergo rigorous training to sharpen his hearing. Ozunu ordered him to wear an eye patch for an entire year and perform all tasks blindfolded to become accustomed to darkness, as a ninja must be able to fight and survive in any situation. At first, Rezo found it difficult, but over time, he adapted and learned to fight his opponents using his growing sense of hearing. He could even hear Kiriko's heartbeat, which was in sync with his own, even when they were far apart. One day, Kiriko, who had defeated her opponent, was ordered to kill him with a knife, but due to her kind heart, she refused. In response, Lord Ozunu cut her face and locked her in a bamboo box as punishment. Feeling pity for Kiriko, Rezo secretly visited her and gave her water to drink at night. On another rainy night, Kiriko attempted to escape from the Ozuno clan's ninja school, and Rezo, knowing her intentions, tried to convince her to stay, as the consequences for students attempting to escape were death. However, Kiriko was determined to leave the school, so she bid farewell to Rezo and climbed over the wall to escape. The scene then shifts to the present, where Rezo already knows about Mika and her address. Meanwhile, Ryan, after analyzing Alexei Sabaton's investigations on the ninja clans, tries to warn Mika about the dangers that may come soon. He gives her a pistol in case she needs it and asks her to find a safe hiding place. However, when Mika arrives at her apartment, she discovers that there has been a power outage in the entire building. Although she had anticipated this, she becomes even more apprehensive. As she enters her home, she finds an envelope and opens it while trembling with fear, as she already knows what it contains. She spills the black sand inside, and at that moment, she is attacked from the darkness. Fortunately, her life is saved when the assassin's sword is blocked by an iron chain that emerges from the darkness. It is revealed that there are two ninjas in the completely dark apartment. One of the ninjas tries to save her and, after successfully knocking out the other ninja who intended to kill her, he warns her that more assassins are on their way and they won't stop until Mika is dead. After warning her about the dangers, the ninja steps out of the shadows, revealing himself to be Rezo. Mika instantly recognizes him because she remembered the footage from Alexei Sabaton's cameras. She is surprised that he saved her life but decides to trust him without asking too many questions. They both leave before the other ninja assassins arrive and kill them. In the next scene, there is a flashback where Kiriko, who is fleeing, is pursued and captured by Lord Ozuna's disciples. Kiriko was then tied up and tortured for her betrayal, 
and the merciless Lord Ozunu orders one of his top students named Takashi to execute Kuriko in front of all the other students so that none of them would dare to follow in Kuriko's footsteps and attempt to escape the Ozunu clan. Takashi, knowing that Reizo and Kuriko were close friends, maliciously smiles at Reizo as he drives a sword into Kuriko's heart. The flashback moves forward a bit and shows that Reizo has officially become an assassin ninja and is about to carry out his first assassination mission. He faces a challenging target to defeat. However, after engaging in a fierce battle, he finally manages to kill the target and take his gold watch. The clan leader asks him to keep the watch as a reminder that he is now part of the legendary clan. With that, Ozunu orders Reizo to execute a Kunoichi who tried to escape, just like Kuriko had done before. However, Reizo, immediately reminded of the tragic fate his beloved suffered for attempting to escape the clan, decides to attack Ozunu and the squad of ninja assassins present. Reizo severely wounds Ozunu's face, but despite his skill in combat, he is outnumbered by the highly skilled ninjas. Reizo is gravely injured and falls from the top of the building. Although he manages to survive the incident, he decides to continue training and one day thwart all the evil and assassination attempts by the Ozuna clan from that point onward. Back in the present, Mika and Reizo decide to hide in a hotel for a while. He asks Mika to clean herself without using soap and change her clothes. After that, he spreads cigarette smoke on her body to mask her scent, as ninja assassins have a keen sense of smell like that of a wolf. Assassin ninjas can locate their targets just by sensing their smell. Thinking that Reizo wants to seek revenge against the Ozuno clan, Mika contacts Ryan to arrange a meeting. They meet in a remote location to discuss the situation they are facing, but Reizo senses that something is wrong with their meeting, as he suspects Ryan. Soon after, the special forces surround and attack Reizo with a high-voltage electric shock, instantly paralyzing him. Ryan and the Europol Special Forces take him to a hidden location for interrogation. Feeling betrayed by Ryan, Mika demands an explanation. He tells her that he had no choice because those in power ordered him to capture Reizo to reveal the involvement of the Ozuno Ninja Assassin Clan in a series of assassinations of important people. However, Ryan assures her that he will stand by her side and try to protect her. He gives her a tracking device so that he and the Europol Special Forces can locate her if the situation worsens. After that, Mika goes to Reizo, who is being monitored by Ryan and other Europol agents. She tells him that Ryan is on their side and will try to help them. However, Reizo believes it is too late, as the ninjas already know their location and are on their way to attack the place soon. Desperate, Mika tries to alert Ryan and the rest of the army about it but they dismiss her concerns and assume it is just a speculation. However, the electricity suddenly goes out, plunging the area into darkness. At that moment, she tries to return to where Reizo was imprisoned to set him free. Meanwhile, the troops who previously ignored her warning now seem confused and struggle to adapt to the darkness that has engulfed the area. Unbeknownst to them, an army of ninja assassins has prepared to massacre everyone. Meanwhile, Mika manages to unlock Reizo's handcuffs just before a ninja is about to strike him with a sword. Reizo tells Mika to quickly escape and save her life. The Europol Special Forces have difficulty dealing with the attacks of the highly trained ninjas, who are skilled in fighting in the dark, while Reizo fights alone against several of them. However, even on his own, he manages to take down the ninja assassins thanks to his rigorous training. But the ninjas from the Ozunu clan keep arriving, and their numbers continue to grow. Reizo, already heavily wounded and exhausted, realizes it is futile to keep fighting and decides to flee to save himself. Meanwhile, Mika, who managed to escape the building, tries to save herself by fleeing in her car, but it is hit by numerous ninja shurikens. At the same time, Reizo, also having escaped, becomes involved in a new fierce battle with ninjas in the streets of Berlin. One of them manages to immobilize him by gravely injuring his stomach, and as the ninja is about to kill him, Mika arrives and runs him over, saving the badly injured Reizo. After that, Mika takes him to an inn to hide, as he doesn't want to be taken to the hospital. Inside the inn, they devise a plan, and during this time, Reizo asks Mika to hide while he surrenders himself to the Azuna clan. Shortly after, Mika reveals their location to Ryan and informs him that the Ozuna clan has captured Reizo and taken him to their base. 
Meanwhile, at another location, Reizo attempts to heal his wounds using the secret healing technique he learned during his journey to the Ozuno clan's headquarters. When he arrives there, he is immediately brought before his former mentor, who accuses him of dishonoring the clan and sentences him to death on the spot. Just as Reizo is about to be executed, Takashi realizes that Reizo carries a tracking device inside his body. In reality, Mika and Reizo planned this so that she and the Europol Special Forces could track Reizo's location and the secret headquarters of the Ozuna clan. Soon after this discovery, the Special Forces invade the clan's headquarters, able to fight against the ninjas because they are properly armed and now know how to fight. The Europol troops illuminate the entire area of the clan's headquarters with strong flares, making it difficult for the ninjas to hide in the darkness. Mika, who came with the Europol troops, immediately frees Reizo. After being freed, he engages in a deadly duel with Takashi, whose skills are nearly equal to those of the leader. However, Reizo, who seeks to avenge Kariko's death, has trained extensively for this long-awaited moment of facing his rival, Takashi. Despite the fierce resistance from the ninja and a brutal fight with ninja weapons, Reizo manages to defeat him and finally avenge Kariko's death. Still gravely injured and covered in blood, Reizo attempts to fight against Lord Ozunu, whose fighting skills seem timeless. Although Lord Ozuna's body is starting to age, he easily evades and counterattacks Reizo's attacks with great precision. At a certain point, he manages to paralyze his former student, and just as he is about to kill him with his sword, Mika arrives and shoots Lord Ozunu, saving Reizo once again. However, furious, Lord Ozunu disappears into the darkness to avoid Mika's attack. When she despairingly asks Reizo where he went, the man appears behind her and stabs a sword into her heart. Immediately, Reizo becomes furious upon seeing Mika dead before him, just as it happened with Kuriko. Renewed with rage, he rises and returns to fight Ozunu with everything he has left. He employs a deadly technique involving a combination of shadows and high-speed movements that he had never used before, as he left the clan before he could learn this technique that only a few can master. However, after witnessing it in the fight against Ozunu, he, as a prodigy, manages to master it as well and defeat Ozunu. Reizo, still able to hear Mika's heartbeat, quickly carries her out of the flames. Outside, Ryan and the Europol Special Forces manage to defeat all the ninja assassins from the Ozunu clan. Reizo tells Ryan that Mika survived Lord Ozunu's mortal attack and is alive because she has a special heart. Mika reveals that she has a unique physical condition where her heart is not on the left side but on the right side, and that is why she managed to survive that situation. As the Europol Special Forces leave the secret base of the Ozuna clan and the fire is completely extinguished, Reizo stays behind and climbs the wall that Kuriko used to escape years ago. At the top of that wall, he has a beautiful view of the mountainous region surrounding the area, understanding now what Kuriko meant by having a real life. He smiles and, for the first time in his life, breathes in the fragrance of freedom that had once been Kuriko's dream.